Oh, welcome back to Shane's Main Shop. Today, I'm going to show you how to re-thread or re-spool up some weed whacker wire because uh, this one ran out. Now, this is different than most of them have uh, one. This is a dual spool uh, weed whacker. So there's actually two spots where you wind up and uh, the, the weed whacker cord comes out two different spots. So there's two of them sticking out of this. Uh, so we're going to take this apart and show you how to rewind that and get it threaded in. Um, but yours might be just a single one, so the procedure is pretty much the same. They're all a little bit different, but for the most part they're the same. But a lot of them only have one um, string sticking out. So we'll get started, get this thing apart. The first thing you want to do is disconnect your spark plug so there's no chance um, that this thing could potentially fire and start on you. Uh, so you want to do that. And you can even remove the spark plug so that'll take off some of the compression or all the compression so you can easily turn the other end if you want. Uh, but at least remove the spark plug wire. So there is some resistance here you can see. Um, that's the compression. Once you remove the spark plug, you know it's not going to start now. Then most of them have a base knob here that you just get a hold of and loosen up and remove it. And I'll take this off one piece at a time so you can see. Once you get this off, you can see that this is actually a bolt inside this and it's got a hex head here so it holds it in place. You don't have to use a wrench on it, you use this whole handle. So you don't want to lose that. So we're going to set that aside. And I've got my thumb over this just so I don't lose the rest of it because there's a couple more pieces here. So this basically is spring loaded. It's going to want to push out on you when you do it to a certain point. But then you're just going to remove this it's going to come off like this and you can see you got a spring here sometimes these springs are not fastened in there they'll just fall off so keep an eye on that and in this case you can see there's two spots here that we're going to be adding a weed whacker line back into now in this particular case here this also is freestanding so this will come off too uh, it's not a big deal it can come off it's not going to hurt anything just make sure it doesn't fall off and you know, i don't want to get dirt in it and certainly want to keep the shaft nice and clean so we'll just set that there now. So the next thing we got to do is get the cord out and start winding it. And we'll show you as close as we can because it's kind of hard to see down inside there. Okay, so I got that piece off and I got myself some new um, cord. And I did not leave it in the box because it never really uncurls out of the box or the packaging correctly. It ends up a big mess. So I took it completely out. But what I did do is put a couple small zip ties on it. And I put them loosely so you can see they turn and I can slide it around the coil as I need to feed off more. Because if you don't do that and you let this go, it's just going to turn into a huge uh, ne uh, rat's nest, <laughs> a big mess. So now with a couple uh, zip ties on it, I can let it go and it's not going to be a big mess. But I can also slide this as I need to uncoil some more. So I got myself, hard to see, but I got about a three foot lead here to start this thing off. Now the important thing is you have to wind this the correct way on the spoil on the spool here because when it spins you don't want it to uncoil itself and make a mess you want to be able to you know do the tap system when you tap it it unlocks these locks here and allows a little more of the uh, stuff to unspool so this is as I said earlier a two cord system so you can see we have two runs here one here and one here and there is holes here that you're going to use to start in. Now these holes are in at an angle to make sure this locks in when you first put it in. So if I were to turn this this way and stick with this top this one here that we were just looking at, I know it's hard to see. Uh, I can slide it in pretty nicely and it kind of seems like that would be the way to go because it kind of goes with the same angle as winding it up. However, if you put this together this way, it is going to, when it spins, it's spinning the wrong way. It's going to try to unspool spool all of this and just jam up your weed whacker. So what you want to do is go against it. So this is going at a pretty sharp angle back in the direction you're going to be winding in. And that's going to make a nice, um, goes down in there probably about an inch or so, three quarters of an inch. So that's going to lock it in there really good when you start to coil it like so. It does make a pretty significant bend right there but it locks it in so now i can pull on this pretty hard and it's not moving and then you're just going to want to start spooling it up now, i won't bore you with this part but we'll get this all spooled up on here a decent amount and then we'll move on to the next thing now you don't want to spool this so tight that it jams into each other 
but you don't want it loose either. So you just want to spool it up snug until you get to your desired amount. Try to go in a uniform, sorry if I got out of camera view, a uniform fashion so it's kind of laying in there nicely and not tangling. And again, every once in a while you're going to have to come over to your other spool here and just slide your zip ties around. As much as this might seem like it's a pain, trust me, this will save you a huge headache by doing this. I just got myself a bunch more. Just drop it down and just go back to spooling this up. Uh, pretty simple. So we'll get this spooled up and then I'll show you how to do the next one. So I have that about as full as I want to go. I don't want to overfill it. Um, it's just about at the top here. You don't want it. If you go too full, then it could jam up. Now, what you see here, if you look, I'll just hold this with my thumb for a second so I can turn this. Uh, if you look at the top of this, you can see some of these have little grooves. This one doesn't, but many of them have little uh, spots here that are cut into it. That is so you can take this cord when you're full and just take it, stick it in there. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just going to lock it in like that. So now I can cut this one off wherever, not worry about it while I'm spooling up the other one and not worry about this thing just going poof and making a mess. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to leave plenty on there for the moment. Cut that off. Uh, so we can set this aside and just kind of regroup on this. But you can see this is still pretty darn neat. It's not all tangled. We'll go ahead and run off a bunch more of this here so we're ready to go. And again, I'm just going to unspool this a few times just so we have some to start off with. And then I just position these zip ties across from each other like that. And then again, I can let go of that. And you can see it's not making a mess. So now I have about four feet to start off the next one. And we're going to look for the hole in that other run. And there it is right there. We're going to go ahead and feed that one through too. So this, again, is going to spool up in the same direction. You can see it goes in there like... Just trying to make sure I'm in camera view. In there like so. It's in quite a ways. So I can kind of let go of it. It's not falling out. And then we're going to spool this up. And we're just going to repeat this process. Now, um, I think I originally said they spool in opposite direction. But they do not. They spool in the same direction. If they spool in the opposite direction, again, one's going to unspool on you. So they go in the same direction. They're going to come out two different holes in the weed whacker. So let me go ahead and get this one filled up so we can get to the next part. Another little tip here. As you're unspooling this, of course, the zip ties get looser and looser. You can go ahead and just snug those up a little bit. It'll help keep it from getting too tangled. So I'm just tightening those up a little bit. And then you can see there's my neat spool that I can just drop off to the side and go back to winding this up. All right, that looks about the same as the other one. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook this one uh, 180 degree, degrees across from the other one because they're going to come out across from... The, each other on the unit itself. All right, so that's locked in. Go ahead and cut this off. And now you have this that you can put away until you need next time. And this is what you got. You have your two things filled back up and you got these locked in place here so they're not <laughs> going everywhere on you because that's exactly what they do, would do if you um, didn't have that. Uh, so, all right, let's get to putting this thing back together. Fairly straightforward from here. Again, you just want to make sure this piece is on there. And it also has a, a hex spot in there that locks into this uh, nut up here. So it spins all together. And then you have this piece here that you're going to reinstall. And you can kind of... That's why I left a little extra to a little tip. Leave a little extra. I'm going to feed that one through there. Get my spring lined up so you can see that. And then I'll feed this one through this side here. We got those in position like that. And I'm going to get ready to um, unhook them from here as I put this up in. And I have my locking nut and cap ready to go. So just going to get it up in there. Hopefully you can see this. I think you can. Turning it. And I'm just going to pull. You can see that unlocked. And then we're going to do the same with this one. And that unlocked. And then you're just going to turn this until it goes up in. You can feel the spring resistance on it like this. And we're going to go ahead and put cover the locking nut back on. And now you have your new thread in. So once you start it up, you're going to be able to hit this and release more, which I can do it manually too because you're going to get it so it's about the length out to here. So if I just pull both of these kind of at the same time and then push on this 
button here, it releases another a little bit. Uh, now you can see that's pretty close to the length here. That one's a little off, so we'll go one more notch with it. This one, you can see, is beyond the cutter, and this one is just about at the cutter. So that's where we want to be. That's how you can re-spool a dual, dual cord weed whacker. And this is now ready to go. We can fire it back up and get out there and do some weed whacking. So if you have to re-thread some cording in your weed whacker, hopefully this video helps you out. Now this is on a uh, home light weed whacker. And of course, the last thing you wanna do is replace your spark plug and your plug wire so you are good to go and you can get back out there doing some weed whacking. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for swinging by Shane's Main Shop. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, I got some trimming to do.